J'ai maintenant l'immense plaisir d'inviter Mirko Bibic le, de Bell Media à venir me rejoindre. Mirko knows what the judges have decided, and most importantly, he is carrying a check for $25,000. Mirko. Thank you, John. Merci, John. C'est un privilège d'annoncer le gagnant du prix uh, Shaughnessy Cohen ce soir. On behalf of Bell Media, I kind of decided I was going to peek, and then I decided not to. So that's why it's a bit mangled. So on behalf of Bell Media, it's an absolute honor to announce the winner of the 2012 Shaughnessy Cohen Prize for political writing. But before I do, we should take a <laughs> we should take a moment though to thank the jury for their efforts. Tasha Carradine, Ed Broadbent, and Danielle Polikamp. It was a, an interlude well worth, worth worthwhile interlude. Okay, so the winner is Marcello De Cintio Walls travels along the barricades. Thank you so much. <laughs> Winning a medal reminds me of my uh, wrestling days, though. Th those are all bronze. So thank you very much. I, uh, I'm, I'm beside myself. Thank you. I'm shocked. Um, I thought I'd written a travel book. Uh, I, I never thought I'd be here uh, uh, being, uh, winning an award for political writing. Um, thank you so much, the Writers' Trust. Uh, especially the jury, uh, Mr. Broadbent, Ms. Carradine, and, and Mr. Poliquin, thank you so much. Um, thank you to uh, uh, everyone at Goose Lane um, and my agent, uh, Jackie Kaiser, who believed in this book when almost nobody else did and, and, and no one had any reason to. Um, I, I want to I thank, too, and, and I, I was so honored to have uh, 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 Nahid uh, speak for me there on the, on, the, on, the, on the video there, because I want to thank Calgary. Um, Especially that I want to thank, thank. I want to thank, and I want to thank Calgarians uh, specifically, um, the uh, the writers and the artists, and especially the, the readers who've always been uh, such great supporters of of, of my work and the, and the work of, of my co colleagues in the arts. And, and I'm very lucky, and I'm very proud to be a Calgarian. Um, I want to thank, thank my, my beautiful wife, Munira, and, and, my, and my little boy, uh, Amadeo, uh, uh, who endured uh, uh, my long absences during the writing and the researching of this book. This is a four and a half year project, 47 weeks away from home. Um, so thank you for enduring that. Um, and, and, and lastly, if you could, because I'll never have this audience again, I just, I just wanted to say a couple things. Um, I started out writing this project, uh, I was gonna write about how the walls uh, all act as, as symbols, symbols of hatred, symbols of racism, symbols of fear. Um, but during the travels, I realized that uh, for those who live in, in the shadows of these walls, those who live in, in this physical intimacy with these walls, the structures aren't symbols at all. They are walls. They are physical barricades that affect the daily lives of, of people in, in real intimate ways. And only those of us who live far away from these, uh, these things have the luxury of seeing them as, as symbols or representations. And, and I think there's a lesson here too for, for foreign policy from, from our end. Um, I think that we need to understand, our leaders need to remember, that the decisions that we make in offices here, the policy papers that they sign, the official pronouncements, the memoranda, um, they have real and intimate effects on real people far away. Um, the world outside of our borders is not merely a collection of nation states or political entities, or other such, such abstractions. The world beyond our borders is made up of human societies, and I think we cannot forget this. Thank you so much. Thank you.